So thanks, thanks for having me here. I'm glad to be uh, able to do this talk um, since one year now, so it's pretty cool. So I'm going to demystify Babel. Is that correct? Cool. So a quick intro. Well, um, Nick, uh, Nick has uh, it already done. I'm Sven Solo. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sven Solo. I'm one of the guy behind Babel, so that's it. So first, what is Babel? Um, of course, it's a it's a very big project. Sorry, it's a big project. We have uh, a lot of contributors. We had a lot of stars. We have uh, a few uh, million dollar uh, downloads per month, which is quite a lot for a JavaScript project. Uh, there is a lot of uh, plugin out there. Um, actually, over over 2k on npm, and probably even more in companies and such. Uh, we also have a big Slack. I put, I actually put the emoji because Slack is going, is going to be crazy in 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 Babel Slack. And so it's very difficult to keep track of things. But I still want you to get there. It's a cool place. Um, uh, should I actually zoom in a bit? Oh shit. OK, good. So there is a lot of uh, flavor of Babel. So just if, if you use uh, one tool either in Ruby, in Python, whatever, there is, uh, there is an implementation for Babel. And of course, you can use it for JavaScript. That's the main point. Shit. I don't know if you know this plugin. So. Basically, it transforms all your bindings into emojis. It's called, a, it's called the Emojification plugin. So this was the first Babel plugin, and you can still use it. It's super cool. So um, Babel is not only transpiling your code. Uh, it's doing a lot of, um, uh, not magic, but hidden work. Like, um, there's a lot of tools built on it. So we have a few minifier. There's a linters. Um, Prettier is using only our parser. Um, a lot of co code tra uh, transformation as well, uh, powered by Babel. Um, if you use the code uh, instrumentation to get the, your code coverage, uh, this is actually um, a the inst inst Istanbul transformation. So it's taking Babel to insert like um, keeping track of things like function calls and, and so on. So this is just uh, an example. We have also Flow and GSX and, and so on. And we can, in Babel se uh, 7, uh, transpile TypeScript now. Um, this is quite specific. Uh, we have a lot of um, like compiler optimization plugins, uh, like Prepack. Prepack is built on top of Babel. Um, I guess you, you know it, so it's pretty cool. We also have uh, another platform built on top of Babel, which is uh, Fable. Th um, you can transpile your uh, F sharp into JavaScript with Babel. So in case you do uh, F sharp, you can use it. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I have a few projects uh, uh, which are linked here, where I use Babel for various things. I won't go into this. Um, if you are a Rails developer and maybe fan, in Rails, Rails 5, um, they're going to use Webpack plus Babel uh, instead of the I said pipeline. And if, and uh, just on the bottom, they are dropping jQuery by default. Um, so we actually love uh, the guy, the folks at uh, TC39. So it's the uh, technical community of JavaScript. So they are doing a lot of like a research kind of thing with new features, or yeah, essentially new features and new syntaxes. And in Babel, we want to build this early on in our platform to be able to use to have users like beta users actually. So we have a world, uh, an entire repo uh, to keep track of which proposal has been implemented in Babel and which not, and and so on. Um, and this is actually a very good way if you want to contribute to Babel. 
just implement one of these uh, syntax plugins. I, I will I will go uh, more into details after. So now the cool stuff. So if you go on the website, there is written that uh, that Babel is a JavaScript compiler. So it, it's it's actually not correct. I, I mean, it is correct. But it's not actually accurate. Uh, in terms of computer science, if you talk about c uh, compiling, it's the process of taking your source code and uh, compiling it into an executable uh, binary. Usually, you use uh, machine code and so, and so on. And so, the real term is called transpiling. So, it's taking your source, uh, doing some magic in between, and then outputting another source. So, it's a source to source compiler. It's a transpiler. Cool. I, I will go into the into more details after that, but um, this is how the Babel um, compiler works. So we have three phases. The first is the parser, which is uh, called Babylon in our case. So it's taking your code, uh, yes, 2015 and um, Various syntax, and then it will be transformed to an AST. It's the thing in the middle, and this is called Babel Core or Babel Traverse, depending on what you want to do. And then the last step is uh, code generation. It's called Babel Generate in our case. I will give, I will go into more details about that later. So as I said, the first uh, component is Babylon. So Babylon is taking your source and uh, outputting an AST. This is the only work uh, Babylon is going to do for us. Um, and uh, we have a small issue, which is each time we, go we add a new plugin or a new syntax or so on, we need to add uh, what we call a flag, which is just, uh, I want the begin syntax, for example, in this code. I want uh, decorators in this code. And this illustrates the state of JS for me, because this is all the syntax we had to, uh, I mean, um, push into Babylon. So this is actually, uh, if you are if, if you are using Babel, this is actually very hidden to you because it's quite complex to know this kind of stuff. So if you use the Babel, if you um, you maybe seen the Babel dash uh, syntax plugins. So this is actually taking care um, for you for th of this. But if you use Babylon uh, directly, you, you need to pass this. OK. Uh, now that we have passed our source, we got an IST. So I, I know IST is kind of a mystic for you, I guess. So we are going to go, to go deeper in the what is actually an IST. So IST stands, stands for abstract syntax tree. Um, so the idea is to have a representation which is not meant for humans, but, uh, but meant for computers. So it's basically uh, like it models uh, your whole program as a tree, and it doesn't model the syntax. For example, Babel doesn't know about if you put here a semicolon or not. Actually, we don't care about that. We care about uh, if you call a function, if you declare something, uh, and so on. So this is an, an example. Uh, on, on top, our, I have my code. It's just 1 plus 2. And on the bottom, I have the corresponding IST. So the first node is just the addition, which is a binary expression. And we have two uh, numbers on the left and right branch, which are here uh, number literals. So this is very simple, I think. But now. Uh, we want to transform it a bit. So this is, for example, a Babel transformation. So if you can see on the left side, you have uh, this is what we, we call a visitor. So you need to put the name of the node, uh, which is um, uh, a method in the object. So the name of the node here is binary expression. We are going to take the node 
and uh, mutate its operator. So we had a plus at the, be at the beginning, and here we are mutating to a, a minus. So it's super simple. On the left side, you have the in, and on the right side, you have the out. We just change the, the sign this way. Um, second example, just you can pick the value. Here, I take the numer numeric literal. I pick the value, I just add one to it, and boom, I, yeah, that's very simple, I think. And the thing is, um, there's actually no magic at all. Um, the AST in Babel, and in most JavaScript projects, the uh, compiler, I mean, uh, we are using um, the, a JSON to represent our AST. So um, on the left side, you can see the operator is now plus because we, we just uh, muted it. And on the left, on, the, on your right side, we muted the value, which is now two. So it's really simple. We just mute, mutate an object. Um, I'm sorry for this because I, wouldn't, I, I wanted to show you like, um, a cool article about AST and the basic of AST. Uh, I couldn't find one. <laughs> sorry. But I, I think if you know Ken.c, uh, he is actually doing uh, workshops about AST. So, sorry. I'm not uh, Googling it for you. But there's a cool website called AST Explorer where you can paste your code and just see the output, which is the AST, and kind of navigate uh, through it. So it's pretty cool. So uh, the two plugins I showed you uh, earlier, it's what you call transformations in Babel. So this is the definition of a plugin in Babel. So you just take one AST and outputs another AST. So it's, this is a plugin, every plugin in Babel is doing this. And one example is the uh, transform, it's transforming the ES modules into require, uh, no, I mean into uh, common JS. So just like taking the import node and outputting a require node. This is, a, 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 this is an example, but really simple thing. OK. But now um, we, have a, an, uh, we still have uh, our AST. And the goal is to output code. So as I mentioned earlier, there's one thing called um, bubble slash generates, which, which the definition is just uh, under it. It's going to take our AST and going to output source, so JavaScript code. <coughs> you probably have heard of Babel 7. <laughs> so it's actually more than one year, one year that we have uh, making early releases. So you can still use the beta in the alpha releases, but it's not um, production ready, I would say. Um, we change a few stuff. Uh, so this is the option, optional chaining feature from uh, the, the community, the TC39 community. So we implemented this, this cool feature. So feel free to, to use it. <laughs> but this is actually super cool because uh, when we an announced it, we had a very cool uh, feedback from the community. Yeah. So I'm glad we, c we can help the community. Um, a second cool feature, uh, to m in my opinion, is the JavaScript configuration. Because uh, b b in Babel 6 and earlier, you had this weird uh, JSON 5 uh, config um, uh, file. Now you can express this in JavaScript. And um, we, we mentioned to uh, deprecate the env, uh, env key. I don't know if you use the env key in your config. No? Nobody? Yeah. OK, so don't use it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, the env key is good. But um, I, I, can't, I can't personally tell the margin strategy we have. So it's pretty, if you get into a wrong config, we could even help you, basically. But uh, we don't care because you have the, 
the JavaScript configuration now. And in that case, you can use like process.env, it just uh, real JavaScript. You can do whatever you like. So it's pretty cool. Um, if you are a fan of the Babel preset uh, 2015, 2016, and so on, uh, we don't like them, and we're going to deprecate them in the future uh, because basically we can change them. There's a date in it, and you cannot change uh, what's inside. But um, we have what we call Babel preset inv. Uh, it's not the same as the inv key. It's just the same name, but it's not actually the same. And I'm going to show you. Um, so this is a tweet. You maybe know this guy. Um, I, I can't remember on which repo it was. I think it's create, uh, re, uh, create React app. I'm not sure. Uh, but they are using Babel preset env. And it's pretty clear because you only need to define a target, like a node 4 or something. And we are going to uh, transpile your code according to this target. Like, you won't get ever um, an unsupported feature anymore. <coughs> and your config now uh, looks like this. Um, if you, so first, I want the two last version of every browser. And I want to target as well node uh, 6.10. And I just run this uh, in my code base. And Babel is going to transpile it to, uh, according to what the features are implemented on, in, uh, on this target. So this is pretty cool and very really easy to use. And I really like this. And it also probably uh, fills your code in case we don't, we can't, uh, in case the feature is, isn't supported on your platform. So it's really easy to use and to me it's really clear as well. If you want to hear more about the 7 release, uh, we had, since it ha has been one year, we have the time to write uh, four articles. So you can check them out on uh, our website. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, hiring is not the correct term, but if you want to contribute to Babel, it's open, it's free. You can just join our Slack and join our community or join whatever you like in Babel. Uh, you won't get paid for it, of course. <laughs> but it's really cool. And if you like, like the compiler science thing and I don't know, uh, do syntax, you can just join. It's pretty cool. And um, if you want to join or write your first plugin, there's one repo which is called the Babel Handbook. <coughs> so, um, uh, yeah, there's a cool article on how to create a plugin or how to use Babel. Um, there's a few language in it if you are not English speaker like me. Uh, there's transla translating in uh, many languages. Uh, the last thing is um, I have stickers for you. Um, I can share you some after. <laughs> and the sticker was actually uh, paid by Babel. Uh, because some people, some really cool people, are giving us money in the open collective thing. And the money isn't only for my stickers, because this will be useless. But we're actually paying uh, someone called Logan, which is, uh, um, he's working full time on Babel. And of course, we want to uh, support this to be able to work uh, longer on Babel and um, release Babel 7. So please donate, it's cool. And this is a good question. There is now a, a Babel song. Oh, we don't see that. Cool. Um, the guy is a Angus. I don't know him, but he is a cow on Twitter. Um, so he, he wrote lyrics about Babel and someone actually uh, so, uh, create a song, so feel free to, to listen to it. OK, so my slides are online on this address. If you want to, if you want to, um, because I, I put some links in it. So if you want to grab the links and, I don't know, visit the slides, you can hit this address. 
So that's that's it for me. Do you have question? Actually, so we cannot break uh, existing code. Yeah. So the, the presets are going to be still there until uh, the end of the world, but we don't maintain uh, we don't maintain them anymore. So technically, you can still use it, but in 2000 uh, next year, you cannot use them anymore because we won't release another one. No, actually in Env you have only the stage four features, which are also in JavaScript. Uh, but you can take uh, the, um, so you can still take uh, stage zero, for example. Yeah. We will still update them, but uh, it's not recommended. But you can take the um, individual plugins. So their current um, proposal uh, dash something, you can just take them into your code. Yeah, so this is an issue because uh, we are uh, making uh, major releases of the stage zero plugin to avoid this kind of uh, breaking changes. Uh, but it's not easy for us to maintain, and we will probably break some code. Yeah, yeah. sorry. So. I don't think it's going to be uh, to change a lot. Babel is still going to be Babel, so it's going. It's still going to be. Uh, there is actually a discussion about um, ES modules because some say that if you have ES modules in your browser, you don't need transp transpiration anymore, and um, some say that Babel is going to um, to be uh, removed because you don't need to transpire it anymore. But this is actually wrong because if you are using um, JSX. For example, you still need to transpire it because they won't ever implement this in browsers. So Babel will still be around, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I can't zoom, no. <laughs> ah, cool. I hope you can read this. Uh. So, here I wrote, uh, hi, Nick. And on the right side, you have the, uh, co um, the corresponding IST. So, in here, you can visit the node. If you click on them, you can visit the node. And the cool thing, I use it a lot. Uh, you can even do. Oh, that's still my example. You can even do transformations <coughs> in the IST Explorer directly. So here you can see the. This is my example. I, I wrote this. I wrote my slide on this actually. So here's my example where I take the one and just uh, increment this. The JSON or the tree? Yeah, it is not tree, but JSON. Uh, yeah, because here you can see it's really just JSON. It yeah. shows you where it starts, line, line beginning, line end, where, where each of the operators and things start and end. Yeah, I didn't mention that, but uh, on my slide I, um, I removed this because it's 
Um, you have the location of each nodes, but it's not very useful to you. Uh, if you use a source map, for example, you don't need to know this. But this actually, um, uh, we are using this internally for generating the source map or better error messages and, and so on. But you don't need them. And you can even hide them. So basically, all your code is just represented in one JSON that can be mm -hmm. understand what a project looks like. Yep. Um, so quite recently, I tried to upgrade an existing project from Babel 6 to 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm wondering, do you have like a high level overview of the ecosystem coming along with seven, or yeah, sure. just some, some packages that are left over in six? Yeah, so there is actually a small gap between six and seven. Uh, we change a lot of, uh, not a lot of, quite a few internal stuff. Um, we are trying to push like uh, Jest or uh, JavaScript framework to use the seven release, but s still, it's uh, it's still beta, so. It's kind of difficult to, to have them. Um, we, so I don't know if you noticed, but we use the um, uh, scoped packages now. Yes. So this kind of sucks because if you use Babel-core as a peer dependencies, which uh, usually uh, JavaScript projects uh, use, the uh, Babel-core is not compatible with uh, at Babel-core. So this is not cool because we, you cannot upgrade actually. There's so there's one thing called uh, Babel dash uh, no I mean slash bridge, which is just which is just taking the Babel dash core and uh, bridging it to uh, Babel slash core. So you can take this to upgrade if you have a peer dependency to Babel uh, dash core. Yeah. Yeah, so, so f f um, actually feel free to open issue in Babel to um, 